Hi there! My name's Maya, and I work with the Nisqually River Education Project. Today we're going to be dissecting a salmon. This is a coho salmon, which is one of the five species of Pacific salmon. This fish was kindly provided to us by the Nisqually Indian Tribe Salmon Hatchery Program. Let's start with some features on the outside of the salmon. This line running from the salmon's head to its tail is called the lateral line. Underneath that line, there are fluids that help the salmon detect vibrations in the water. The salmon's skin is covered in a layer of slime, which protects it from parasites. Salmon also have a layer of scales embedded in their skin, which makes their skin tough and protects them from predators. These scales grow with the salmon throughout its life. Fish use their fins to steer themselves while swimming. On the top of their back is the dorsal fin. Behind the dorsal fin is the adipose fin. This fish does not have an adipose fin because it came from a hatchery. Removing the adipose fin is a way that hatcheries mark their fish to distinguish them from wild fish. Next is the tail fin or the caudal fin. This fin is very important for helping the fish swim. Moving on to the underside of the fish, we have the anal fin near the tail. This is just behind the fish's vent where it excretes its waste. Next we have a pair of fins called the pelvic fins. And finally another pair of fins called the pectoral fins just behind the fish's head. Salmon have eyes just like humans, but unlike humans, they don't have eyelids. Our eyelids help us by keeping our eyes from drying out. Salmon live underwater, so they don't need to blink to keep their eyes moist. Salmon also have nostrils, which they use to smell. Salmon have jaws, teeth, and tongues just like humans, but they also have teeth on their tongue and these teeth help keep their food inside of their mouths and stop them from escaping. At the back of salmon's heads, behind their gill plate, are their gills. Salmon gulp water and filter it through their gills to absorb oxygen from the water into their blood. Now let's talk about the differences between male and female salmon. Male salmon are often larger than female salmon. Male salmon will also have a hump on their back and a more hooked jaw. So what do you think? Is this salmon a male or a female? If you're watching with your class, you can pause now and discuss. Now it's time to open up the salmon. This part might get a little gory, so if you feel uncomfortable, Make sure to take some time and look away from the computer. As I'm opening it up, I can see eggs start to come out, which means that this is a female salmon. If it were a male, it would have milt sacs instead of eggs. Salmon can lay thousands of eggs, and of all those eggs, only two or three will survive to adulthood. Now that I've removed all of the eggs, we can see the rest of the internal organs. Next I'm going to remove the liver. The liver produces bile, which helps break down fat. On the side of the liver, there is a little green blob, and that is the gallbladder, which is where bile is stored. Next I'm going to remove the digestive system which runs from the fish's mouth all the way to the vent. The digestive system begins with the esophagus followed by the stomach. Following the stomach is the pyloric cica, which looks like a pile of spaghetti noodles. This structure allows for more surface area for the nutrients to be absorbed from the food into the bloodstream. Waste then travels from the pyloric cica 
down the intestine out to the vent. Attached to the digestive system is the spleen, where blood is produced and stored. Next, I'm going to remove the heart, which pumps blood throughout the body. The heart is small, but a very strong and firm muscle. The next organ I'm going to remove is called the swim bladder. The swim bladder is an empty sac filled with gases that allows the fish to stay neutrally buoyant. This saves them energy while swimming. This salmon swim bladder is deflated, but normally this whole tube would be full of air. Lastly, I'm going to remove the kidney. The kidney filters waste from the bloodstream and also produces blood. Now that we've removed all of those organs from the main body cavity, we can see the muscles and the rib bones. The muscles on either side of a fish's body are the fillets, which is what you would normally be eating if you buy a fish from the store. Next, I'm going to go back up to the head and remove the gills. The gills have teeth on the inside of them called gill rakes, which prevent food from escaping through the gills. The gills have multiple layers and a feather-like texture, which allows for more surface area for the blood to absorb oxygen from the water being passed through the gills. Next, we will remove both eyes. Finally, I'm going to cut into the skull to find the brain. This pink matter in the brain cavity is the brain. On either side of the brain, fish have ear bones called otoliths. The otolith is a very small bone and it grows as the fish grows. Scientists can study this bone under the microscope and learn things about the fish's life like what it was eating, how much time it was spending in fresh and salt water, and how old it is. Now that I'm done dissecting this fish, I'm going to throw it back into the Nisqually River so the nutrients in its body can continue to benefit the ecosystem. Thank you for joining us for this salmon dissection today. I hope you've learned some fun things about fish, and we'll see you next time.